I applied the pressure bandage to his leg. He hasn't moved since we got here. Yeah, he's got a head injury. Did you call this in? Yeah, but somebody had already beaten us to it. Amazing straight ride. You wonder how he managed to crash. It's amazing how the stuff just gets thrown everywhere when he rolled it. Some bloke shouldn't have their license. True. Straight in. Okay, all set. Okay, go. No, I'll need one of you to stay in here and keep the pressure on. Jack, you go with him. Yeah. I'll stay here and tally everything up. I'll wet enough as it is. Enjoy the weather. Thanks, mate. Hey, stirring. Is he? Yeah. Try to kill me. What? Mate. The bastard, he tried to run me off the road. He ran me off the road. Uh, photographics have finished out at the accident site and this is the last of his stuff. Oh, God. It was chucked all over the place like a bomb hit it. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Rode like a gun barrel and somehow he spun out and flipped it. Sounds like he might have gone to sleep, huh? Well, he said something about being run off the road. Who by? I don't know. He was only half conscious. Witnesses? Anybody that... Shed any light? Not at this stage. Uh, yeah, whoever rang the ambos, maybe? Yes, well, that call still remains a mystery. Actually, it's a good idea, Maggie. I'll get on to the ambulance service and have a listen to that tape. Might be <laughs> worthwhile. Well, the poor bug is in hospital. Dr. Farrah's looking after him. Is he talking? Oh, yeah, but he's not making much sense. All right, keep in touch with her. As soon as he's able, go and have a chat. So you don't remember anything about the other car? Oh, sorry, I don't. You sure, Mr. Jacobs? Yeah, I'm not too sure of anything. I'm sure you said something about another car which ran you off the road. Did I? Mr. Jacobs was heavily concussed. Is this going to take much longer? I'd like him to get some sleep. Won't be long. So you're just visiting Mount Thomas, are you, sir? Yeah, not quite. I'm into second-hand furniture antiques and I just came to inspect a couple of pieces. Mm -hmm. So my things are all right. Uh, yeah, everything's down at the station. Yeah. And you got everything? Yeah, everything that was there. Uh, suitcase, overnight bag full of clothes, golf clubs, travelling alarm clock, um, some books. That's about it. Nothing else? Well, I, I got everything that was inside and outside. Was outside? there something in particular? Yeah, well, your suitcase was thrown out of the car when it rolled. Well, it was open? Yeah, it's not unusual. Depending on the speed you were going, it would have hit pretty hard. We uh, booked in anywhere, Mr Jacobs? Sorry? We well, booked in. We should let them know where you are. Yeah, um, a hotel, the Imperial, thanks. Mr Jacobs, can you offer any explanation for the way that your car ran off the road? I think we'd better leave it. Yep. See you, Mr Jacobs. It still sounded like it was being very basic. Yeah, or just in shock. I rolled the ute once and I was off the air for a week. Stuart, I just got off the blower to your ex-wife. Rachel, she rang it. No, she didn't ring me. I just took the call. She wants you to call her tonight. Something about fees. Yeah, it's only money. Uh... All right, then, I'm off. Hey, you'll be good now. Yet another night on my own. Do you know Tanya's dress is all taffeta? Tanya, she's getting married. She's 19. Yeah. Hey, this bridal shower's just in St David's. Why are you staying the night? Because it's going to be late, and my girlfriend offered for me to stay over. <coughs> Very sensible. Just remember, you're going to have to get up earlier to be here on time. Of course. Good night, all. See you later. So how did you two go talking to that driver? I didn't know what day of the week it was, boss. It's a bit sus, boss. He says he doesn't remember anything. Well, you'd have no reason to lie, would he? I don't know. It's just that it was the first thing that he said when he came to. Maybe he just lost control in the rain, and that's how he crashed. I don't know about that. Jack, come here and look at this. Looks like a bit of a headlight housing. Yeah, well, Jacob's lights weren't busted. No. Could belong to the other car. If there was another car. When I mean, the crash happened all the way back there. Yeah, but it depends on what speed they are travelling. It could have carried it forward. Yeah, or it could have been here for months. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Is this a bit of light. Now, this could belong to Jacob's car. In which case, who's... Is that headlight housing? Or well, do you reckon this is some kind of road rage thing? I don't know, it could be. And why wouldn't he want to talk to us about it? So I think if there weren't any weddings, then there wouldn't be any bridal showers. And if there weren't any bridal showers, then we wouldn't be looking forward to a whole gloriously undisturbed night together. Why? Is that what you think what marriage is good for? I'm listening to you, Mr. Ah! Firm Bachelor. Hey, you don't want to believe everything that you hear. Oh, really? No. Dash? Maybe she decided not to stay the night after all. Sorry, right, you won't come in. No, I wouldn't think so. Maggie! That's my father. Ready? Dad? Ha <laughs> ha! 
Surprise! Yeah, what a surprise. What are you doing here? Long service leave. Hey, remember the key you gave me? Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Gee, look, it's early. I, I didn't think I'd wake you up. Oh, really, hey. Dad? That's, that's hey. fine. Are they for me? They're gorgeous. Of course, I've got a hug for you, old man. Of course I have. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Well, I um, better put them in some water. They're just beautiful, yeah, right. Dad. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> that bad? Yeah. Hello. What time? Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll be moving along. Dad, you really don't have to. Please stay. No, no, no. It's okay. I I wasn't going to stay anyway. I mean, I've got a room at the Mount Thomas Motel, so I'm fine. I'm fine. Honest. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. See ya. I'll ring tomorrow. Right, so did you talk to him? You're at a loop check. Yeah, and he is a second-hand furniture that? dealer. That's Jacob. recorded, but there's yeah. no convictions. He was first interviewed in 93 oh, when some guy OD'd. Then in 94, his car was stolen and later found mm -hmm. burnt out. Well, it is a poor well, if they Betty. do get stolen. Betty Danders showed Jacob some furniture. Apparently he has a share in a city antiques business and he has clients looking for authentic rural pieces. So he's into antiques. And three years ago, his office burnt down and he lost money in his safe. Burnt Porsche, burnt office. He has an awful lot of bad luck, doesn't he? Yeah, Jack's checking with arson now. All right, yeah, thanks for that. See you later. What's the story, mate? He was cleared as a suspect. They couldn't prove it was deliberately lit. So he cleaned up on his policy. Do you get the feeling there's more of this Mr Jacobs than meets the eye? Mm. Morning, all. Hey, mate. How are you? All right. Here you go, Jackie boy. Excuse hey. me. PJ, can I just talk to you about this? Story? PJ, he is old-fashioned, and uh, did you see the way he looked at you? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool about it. <laughs> That's exactly what another bloke said about him. Another bloke. It doesn't matter. Look, I'm just trying to tell you that he is... he's unpredictable. No, you know what he is? He's a man of the world. I thought he was... Well, pretty, not pretty, around pretty. me, he ain't. Uh, Detective Hashem, Mount... Pat! So, how's it going, PJ? Oh, I can't complain. Nice car. Yeah, rental job. Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> it's a bit early for me, thanks, Pat. So, uh, what can I do you for? I was just wondering how Maggie was going. Oh, I think she's headed for promotion. Now, you know what I mean. I'd hate to see you get hurt. You, you don't have to worry about that, Pat. Well, I lost a son because I wasn't a very good dad, so I do worry. I love her, you know. I'm pretty fond of her too. Pretty fond? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Just promise me you won't hurt her. Man, I'd never hurt her. Right. That's all I wanted to hear. But that's it? Yeah, that's it. She's my girl too, you know. Hey, listen. I see some of you blokes out in the back road yesterday. Some car off the road. Uh, yeah, the uh, driver's in hospital. You find anything? <laughs> Pat, I thought you were on leave. Oh, you know, us old coppers. Hey, listen. Don't tell Maggie that we talked about this, OK? He was just being a protective father. Oh, you're right. Mate. You're his little princess. If I jilt you, he's going to thump me. If you jilt me, I'll thump him myself. <laughs> I'll remember that one. And that's all he wanted. That's all. I've just been to the hospital for another chat with Marcus Jacobs, but he's discharged himself. It's a bit sudden. Yeah, that's what Yasmin said. Has he been in touch about picking up his stuff? Oh, well, not that I know of, no. How'd you go with his car? Uh, it's going to take a while to get the report back on the tail light pieces. Right, it's still at the panel shop? Yep. In there. Hey, Ernie! Hey, PJ. How yeah. are you? What's happening? Oh, not much. Hey, listen, uh, we came to have a look at the Jacobs car. Well, him easy to take. What? Well, your mob's already in it. Oh, Ben Stewart. Nah, some bloke I don't even know. Oh, well, thanks for that. Cool. Thanks. Pat. Dad, what would he want with Marcus Jacobs' car? Pat. What? Barry, what are you doing here? Is this my job? Ah, oh, this is Acting Sergeant Doyle. This is Detective Cray. Uh, you're CIB. Yeah. Yeah, Maggie, we met. We have. We're telling this to St. David's, mate. St. David's? Well, why St. David's? I work there. Prang happened on our patch. 
You can have a look now if you want, Mags. Mick, what hey. are you doing here? Surprise. Put a hand up, sis. Come on. Good to see you. <laughs> nice tie. Hey, Mick, how are you? I don't even want to ring anymore. Hey, you, uh, you two related? Oh, only by birth. <laughs> He's my big brother. <laughs> You're checking again. Yeah, Jacob just kept going on about his stuff. I, I wondered if I missed something. You're taking a fair bit of trouble about this, aren't you? Well, if he was run off the road, that's a hit and run. Was it because of his cargo? Just make sure that everything is accounted for when he does come to pick it up. And for a bloke who was stressing out about his stuff, he's taking his time to come and collect it. Oh, he's done at the Imperial. He dropped in, then left, and hasn't come back again. The dander said he hasn't been back to him well, either. Well, 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 look what the cat's dragged in. Larry Craig, how are you? see you, boss. You too. <laughs> hey, boss. Mick. What are ESD doing in Mount Thomas? I'm one of the good guys in our drug squad. Listen, can we have a uh, private word in your office? After you. What do you know about Marcus Jacobs? Only that we pulled him out of a car wreck yesterday. Why do you ask? What, did he say anything? That he made a living out of selling antiques. Not much else. He was pretty groggy at the time. Yeah, well, that's often when people let things slip. Are you sure there was nothing else he said? Well, Senior Constable Stewart was the one who actually talked to him. We're looking into the possibility that there was a second vehicle involved in the accident. What's your interest, boys? Oh, it's, uh, it's a bit hush-hush, mate. What, so you can't tell us why you're dogging him on our patch, then? Yeah. Look, it might be better if you just pass on what Jacob said to you. At least we're entitled to know what the drug squad is doing in Mount Thomas. Surveillance? Of Marcus Jacobs. Well, let's just say we've had our eye on Mr. Jacobs for quite some time. He's a drug dealer. And now he is in Mount Thomas. I think there's a problem. Your father was asking about Marcus Jacobs' car. Right. When? No, I went to see him. Oh, thanks a lot. You said that he didn't say anything to you and he was just being the father. Well, yes, he was, but he also asked about the car. I mean, you know, of course, he could have just been driving by and, like... Any other copper? Yeah. But I still think we need to have a chat to him. I don't see what the problem is, but sure. What are you doing here? Pat, why did you ask me about the car crash? Yeah, thanks, mate. Well, what's the connection? What connection? Marcus Jacobs, Dad. We know that he's dealing. He's doing a run here. He should have found something in his car. Well, you know that for sure? Well, he's a dealer, isn't he? Should have found something. Smack. Money. Didn't find anything. Did you run him off the road? Me? I was following him. I wanted to find out who he's working you with. following him? Yeah, well, until I lost him at St David's, I had to stop for gas. No, no, I saw him off the side of the road there. Dad, did you know that Mick's in town? Mick, no. He doesn't confide in me very much. So who put you on to Jacobs? Someone you don't know. So keep this quiet, eh? I found out that this is the past that put Robbie onto heroin. What, so that was everything he had? Yes, Mick, that's a lot. You sure, mate? Well, we did check it when we entered it in the property book. Well, check it again, Dash, because we've got to make sure Ben entered everything that was in that I car. entered everything I found. Can I take a look at that property book, Cousin? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll find that each item's in there. And you're the only person who handled this stuff, Sam? Yeah. No, I, I helped in the him station. collect and log it. Still no sign of Jacob. No, not so far. Oh, keep okay. trying. Thank you. Oh, there's an assault in progress at the Botanical Gardens. Two males involved. Hey, blood nut, where are you going? Take it easy. What's the problem, mate? What's the problem? I'm clean. Hey, who hit you? Come here. Who hit you, mate? Look, all this had nothing to do with All right, mate, all what? Who hit you, matey? Who hit you? Some bloody nutcase. Can you describe him? What do you look like? Come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all right. I'm not going to hurt you, mate. You're all right. What do you look like? All I saw was his fist. I think he had fair hair. That's about all I can tell. All right, which way did he go? OK, Mount Thomas okay, what 208, what are you doing in the park? Did you hit him back? Yeah, code five at your last. OK, look, we'll take him back to the car. One male to camp in a north direction through the Botanic Gardens. Fair hair. 
No further description. So you've got no idea who hit you, Benny? Just one of your many fans, eh? Now, have you got any idea, Benny, what this mystery assailant looks like? I told you, I don't know. Was he tall? Was he short? Average, kind of. Was he fat, thin, anything at all? Medium. Mate, are you aware that the drug squatter in town? No. But I don't know anything else, I swear. Still a bloke with your record getting thumped in the park. It wouldn't surprise me if they wanted the chat. I'm clean, really. Mm, so you keep saying. Now, do you want to talk to us? Or do you want to talk to the drug squad? All right, all right. It, it was Marcus Jacobs. He just got out of hospital, Benny. He's in no condition to be taking a swing. He's still a big guy and he can hit. And why would he want to hit you, Benny? He reckons he's been ripped off. Mm -hmm. Who by? Oh, I just heard he'd done a lot of business. Smack? Yeah, buyers came from miles around. Other dealers involved? Yeah. Then he had a bit of bad luck. Well, he told you someone ran him off the road and ripped him off. Now, you're a local. He thought you might know who did it. But I don't. What do they take when they ripped him off? Money. Big money. And they even asked me about the coppers down here. What did he ask? He asked if you were straight, you know. Of course, I told him you were. Benny, you still haven't told us why he hit you. I guess he didn't believe me. $25,000. Mm, it was taken out of Jacob's car. But I checked through that car. No sign of forced entry on the boot. No, it was a hatchback. It was wide open. Oh, sorry, I was putting Jacob's in the uh, ambulance. Oh, no sign of anybody loitering around? Not while we were there. Before that? Oh, I didn't see any signs of anyone. Lawson? Me neither. Uh, well, what about the Ambos? Have we got any idea who called them yet? Yeah, the call was take, but it was just a male voice. It could have been anyone. So then you went off in the ambulance, which means you were left there by yourself, so there's no-one to back up your story. Boss, what can I say? We'd better pass Benny Matthews' story on to Mick Doyle. Look, it could have been anyone that Jacob sold to or someone driving past his car. Yeah, absolutely. It could. But? But we still have to eliminate him from the picture. Look, if Dad is on to something... He, he could risk stuffing up this whole investigation. But if he's right, if he can do something on his own, then why shouldn't we just let him do it? Yes. PJ, Dad is not the only one who hates this bloke for what he has done to our family. Benny said it was a big run. Word was out and buyers are coming from St David's and all over. Well, did Benny say who might have had the opportunity to take the dough? No, it could have been anyone. I assume we're not including Stuart. No, of course not. Well, hang on. We've got to face facts here. You see how it looks? He's out there alone with the car. Uh, obviously someone got there before him. Well, who, PJ? Right. Stuart. Uh... No, he's not out here, boss. Check the residence, would you? Ben! Hey, Ben! The boss wants to have... Bastards busted the glass. Is there anything missing? Oh, I don't think so. It's too hard to tell. I can't believe that nobody heard anything. Lawson, take a walk around, see if anybody noticed anybody hanging around. Yeah, right, oh, boss. Breaking into a police residence in broad daylight, ballsy. Desperate. I take it you live here, mate? Yeah. What do you reckon they're looking for? <laughs> I've got no idea unless they're after a pair of sweaty old jocks or something. Couldn't have anything to do with a car, could it, mate? Sorry, I don't follow it. Well, there was a large quantity of money missing. Oh, come on. Surely you're not suggesting that Ben had anything to do with this? No, boss, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just covering all the bases. Oh, Barry, don't be... All right, ridiculous. senior, that'll do. I, th I suggest that we continue this back in my office. Jacobs was here to do some business, and he'd done quite a lot of it. So our problem is, what do you think might have happened to the day? Well, his possessions were thrown around inside and outside the car. We thought it was the impact, but it could have been someone searching through it afterwards. As Lawson will no doubt confirm. Yeah, yeah, of course he would. But who else would have had the chance to search it, Ben? I don't know, the person who ran him off the road, whoever called the ambulance. Did you see any cars around? No. It's not to say that somebody hadn't already stopped there. No, of course not. Well, you were left alone with the car. Mick, everything I found at the car was transferred straight to the property cage. Not, uh, not the first time you've been in trouble, is it? But I'm not in trouble here. No. No, but 
You were disciplined and demoted when you were posted here, weren't you? It's on my record. I punched out a bent copper. There was no yeah. question of dishonesty. I understand you split with your wife, Ben. That's got to be hard. How are you doing for money? Sorry, that's none of your business. Well, it is our business, Ben. Maintenance? That's why he didn't come and get his stuff, because he thought we'd found his money. Yeah, and then he decided one of us must have taken it, but the boss is on to it. It's fine. Jeez, what's going on in there? Mate, if you want to help him, go and ask Chris if she saw Jacobs talking to anyone at the pub. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, uh, Jack, you want to grab the lunches while you're there? Yeah, not a worry. Thanks. You're going to have to tell the boss about your dad. PJ! Crime scene is still checking for fingerprints in there and they've taken some shots of Ben's stuff. Anything back from forensics on those bits of tail No, not yet. You okay? Oh, they're geniuses. They're basically saying that somebody broke in and stole $25,000 that I'd take it out of yeah, Jacob's no, car. No, no. Look, the break-in didn't help. You think I did it? Of course not. What do you reckon? Thanks. Sorry, mate. I've got to go check out who did I'm going to talk with the neighbours again. Yeah. No, we're onto it, okay? Yeah. Mick. I know, Ben, he wouldn't have taken Not now, place. Maggie, please. All right, OK, listen, do you want to... Maggie, I'm a... I can't discuss it. I'm Are you sure listening I'm to me? I'm trying to ask you if you want to come over for dinner tonight. That's all. Oh, oh, I'd love to, sorry. Nick, look, just doing our job. Come with me. Now good? Uh, receptionist said he went out about an hour ago. Pub. Pub. What were you talking about? Antiques. Hang on, PJ, uh, might be better if you leave this to us, mate. No, it's fine, I'll sit in. PJ's all right. Fine. No offence, mate. No problem. So, Pat, how do you know Marcus Jacobs? That's my information. But you found out he was on his way to Mount Thomas. You're telling the story. And you followed him. Your words, not mine. <sighs> Jesus, you're a bloody dinosaur. Mick. Sergeant, we need to know the name of your informer. Yeah. That's my business. It's our business. It's our business. Why don't you do everyone a favour and get out of the game? I'd suggest it'd be better if you just tell us what we want to know. Mr Jacobs, do you understand? What do you want to know? Did you come here to sell a quantity of heroin? Did you bring a quantity of heroin here to sell? I have nothing to say about that. We have reason to believe that you did. Then you're wrong. Did you lose a sum of money from your car? When? When your car was run off the road yesterday. I already told you I can't remember anything about that. Well, you told Benny Matthews that you were forced off the road. Never heard of him. No? Do you assault Benny Matthews? Who? Calm down, Mr Jacobs. Look at your knuckles. For the benefit of the tape, I'm now looking at Mr. Jacobs' knuckles. They're pretty swollen, Mr. Jacobs. What'd you get that from uh, hitting Matthews? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. This probably happened in the prank. Oh, well, hang on. What, what, the prank? What, the prank that you can't remember? What did Sergeant Doyle assault you? I don't know. Ask him. Listen, I'm innocent. Oh, you're pretty nervous, aren't you, for an innocent guy? With all these accusations, why wouldn't it be? Well, I'd be pretty jumpy, too, if I had $25,000 to Mr. Big. Is he jumpy enough to crack? Could be. All right, then we keep the pressure on. Best way to do that might be to let him go. Let him go. Oh, he's shaky, he's scared. He's going to make mistakes. There's no telling who he might lead us to or who might come to him. Worth a try. All right, I'll lend you some bodies to keep an eye on him. No, thanks, boss. This one's ours. We'll do it in shifts, mate. I'll do the first one. All right. And Mick, uh, it might be a good idea if you get rid of your old man. No, oh, it's probably a good idea. Yeah, he's a fruitcake. I don't want him getting in the way. I'll have, a, I'll have a word to him. Good luck. Yeah. I'll be defending this. You'll get your chance to defend your assault charge when the case goes to court. So, I'm in the cells overnight? No, Mr Jacobs, you're free to go. I'll go? 
Well, I've seen Sergeant Croydon is prepared to grant bail on your own undertaking. Right. You don't look too happy, Mr. Jacobs. Shouldn't have been in here in the first place. Look, Mick, this is none of your bloody business. You're like a great record, Dad. It is my oh, business. Oh, oh, business. Oh, 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 take it easy. Oh, Mick, Dad. Hey. Mick. What? You still come for dinner, please? I need to talk. Yeah. I'll bring some more. Yes? They haven't spoken since Robbie's funeral. It's just... I know he's a pain, Mick, but just look at what he's been through. Huh? Well, what he's been through. You know, look, we've all had a hard time, but for Dad, you know, he's he's lost a wife, he's lost a son, he's torn his heart out. Well, so I talk to him. You ready to listen to me? Just make the first move with him. He's a pig-headed old copper. You got the guts to talk back to him. Just. You just. try. Uh, I'll get that. Thanks. <laughs> hi! Dad, hi! <laughs> oh, I couldn't find me key. Hey, having a party? Oh, no, no, not really. No, no, there's always a party when Mickey Boy's around, eh? Dad, <laughs> no, honestly, he's, he's so busy, I'd never get a chance to have a word with him. Hey, could I have a word with you, Mickey? Hey, come on, fellas. I need to talk hey, about listen. shop, eh? Listen, listen. <laughs> you know what I'm on about? This Jacobs, he is a scumbag that got to Robbie. Hey? So I'm gonna get to him. Yeah, yeah that's right, right Dad. We just want a conviction. Do you think that'll help us, Dad? Wait, You're blundering around the place, huh? You get a conviction. You've been trying for months. You've got nowhere. Well, what would nowhere. you know, Dad? You wouldn't even know. You see, we're the ones that are running the investigation. So you wouldn't have to just blunder You're around. Trying to do hey, exactly right. the same thing. Have a few drinks, have a few drinks and go and solve a few crimes, eh? Isn't that right, Dad, eh? Ah, uh, funny boy. <laughs> same old, same yeah. old, eh? Good on you. Hey. Oh, you should that, be eh? proud of yourself, eh? <laughs> You're drunk, Dad. You're half cut. Uh, what do you think drove Mum to a grave, Dad? <laughs> what do you think drove Mum to a grave, Dad? You crappy little oh, scum! Oi, 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 that's Dad. enough! Oi, you stop Dad, going listen! You shut up and back off. Pat, we're leaving. Come on, Pat. All right. Come on. Come on, mate. She's right. Drove Mum to a grave. It's all right. Come on. Just as oh, you no. talk Sorry, to me. Sorry, mate. Sorry. It's all right. Doesn't matter what you do for him. Never get any thanks for it. Haven't you had enough? Oh. Dirty money. That's what it is. Dirty money. You should have let me clobber that mongrel. What are you talking about? Jacobs. Killing's too good for him. Pat, why don't you think about Maggie here, eh? Yes, I'm thinking about Maggie. I don't want her involved in this. Gee, you don't know what these bastards are like. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, bugger off. He's a loud, domineering bastard, and, he, and he'll never change. It's not true. Well, it's all right for you, you... You were always his golden girl. You never let yourself see the other side of him, Mick. There's another side to him. Yeah, there is. Think about it. Why is he like that to you? Because you're just like him. I'm nothing like him, Maggie. You are. You're two of a kind. You've just got a different style about you. It's crap. I've got to go and relieve Barry on his shift. Thanks for dinner. Sorry to call you so early. Don't worry, it's all part of the service. There was a bit of a commotion. Maybe it was nothing, but I just can't get him to open the door. All right. Mr. Jacobs, are you awake? Very different came in last night. Oh, yeah, you should have heard him. Mr. Jacobs. <sighs> Mr. Jacobs, police. A bit grumpy. Oh, Big. yeah. He virtually chucked his meal out here into the floor, you know, after kicking up a huge stink about it. All right, Chrissy, would you mind opening now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, way too late. 
Dash is mining the body till the government undertaker arrives. We're going to need to notify his next kin. What about homicide? Are you suggesting somebody else injected him? Just got your message, me. There goes three months of violence. Is PJ around? Yeah, he's taking a statement from Chris Riley. I, I didn't exactly see anyone. But you heard someone? You know how you get to know voices. Chrissy, did, did you recognise this, this particular voice? I, th I thought I did. Mm. Or who was it? Oh, look, it, it was late and there was all this noise and banging on, on one of the upstairs rooms. That... Jacob's room, was it? He sounded pretty angry. Who did? It was your dad. Manager hasn't seen him. No signs of his car. Could it be off with the bottle of Mount Thomas 508 portable to Mount Thomas Station. Go ahead, PJ. No sign of Pat, boss. All right, come back to the station. I've got Lawson hunting around at the pub. Maybe someone saw Pat leave last night. Roger that. Sergeant Doyle. Sir. Mr. Doyle! Hey, get it! <sighs> unless, unless I thought this was my car. It, it is. Where are we? So, Pat, you slept in the car park. Any port in a storm. What did you do after Detective Hashem dropped you back at your motel? I must have taken a walk. To the Imperial Hotel? Yeah, I parked the car there. After last time, I'd had one too many to drive. Why? Come in. D24 have kept me informed, but I'll need you to bring me up to date on the details, Senior Sergeant. We'll continue this interview then. With regard to the missing money, have you searched Sergeant Doyle's room? What are you talking about? Uh, we didn't actually have a chance. Failure to search is failure to find, Detective. Hey, we'll get right on it, ma'am. Not you. You're off the case. Anything? Nope. You won't find anything. There's nothing to find. Hey, PJ! So. Well, how the bloody hell would I know? Must be thousands. I don't know anything about any money. Then what was it doing in your room? Or well, maybe it was planted there. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? <sighs> Pat, you admitted you had it in for Jacobs. No. I know you think this man is responsible for I that. never went there. We have reason to believe that you were at the hotel late last night. Pat, you were heard there. Oh, I don't remember. All right, maybe I did go there. Maybe I knocked on his door. But I didn't kill him. That's a God's honest truth. This way, Sarge. Dad. No, Dad, do you need a please, solicitor? Please. I can get Stay you a solicitor. Stay out of it, Maggie. Stay out of it. We'll uh, continue as soon as Sergeant Doyle comes back from the toilets. Yes, ma'am. On the evidence, you'll have to call homicide. I suppose so, uh, McKinley. Yeah, sure. I presume you'll want Sergeant Doyle remanded in custody until you have pursued your inquiries. Oh, is that necessary? He's in a job. He's not going to do a runner. He's implicated in a murder, Detective. He's not a direct threat to the community. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I'll personally vouch for him. Very well, Detective. On your head. There is no way that Dad would give anyone an overdose, not after what he happened hated to Robbie. Jacobs. He would put him in jail. He hated dealers, and Robbie's death gives him motive, Maggie. What more do you want? You think that he's guilty? No, it doesn't matter what I think. I have to deal with the evidence. Somebody put the money in his room. So what, you think that somebody stashed $25,000 in his room? Or do you think that he would still drug Well, money? if he thought that he could flush out the associates of Jacobs, yes, I do.
If we could just find the person that ran Marcus Jacobs' car off the road, then then we'd be able to clear oh, Dan. Maggie, oh, that's please. It. You said that you're dealing evidence. Now, there, there's a key, it's a key piece of evidence that we haven't got yet. Come on. All right. PJ, Ben, yep. forensics. Those bits and pieces are off the headlight housing of the other car. There you go, what does I say? Yeah. 84 Sigma. Could Pat have been driving an 84 Sigma? No, he's in a silver Commodore. No, that car's re rented, remember? Yeah, but Thomas. Dad's car's an old Ford in Melbourne. It is not him. All right, blokes, so you, you ring around Mitsubishi dealers, garages, fixer shops, anywhere and everywhere, and find that car. Yeah, what did I tell no, you? Look, you just can't get too excited, Mags. It mightn't lead us anywhere. Well, it'll lead us to whoever did the hit run. Well, there are a couple of other things still pointing at Pat. Yeah, no, I'll be explained when we interview the driver. Well, I hope you're right. I know I'm right. Got it, PJ. A dealership couriered out a headlight housing for an 84 Sigma just yesterday. Good address. All right. Oh. PJ, this is it, all right? This paint matches Jacobs' car. Thomas 508 Portable to VKC. Go ahead, man, Thomas. Uh, yeah, VKC, can we get uh, the usuals on a 84 Mitsubishi Sigma wagon registration, November Kilo Lima 389? He's got his headlight in, he hasn't had a chance to change it yet. Mm. Man, Thomas 508, that rego confirms a red Sigma station wagon. The owner is Patrick Leonard Doyle of a Glen Waverley address. Why did you run Marcus Jacobs off the road? An eye for an eye, was it, Pat? No. You're on record as saying you hated the deceased. In a sense, some of us wouldn't blame you. I'm making no admissions. You can't make this go away, Sergeant. Is there anything you want to say, Pat? Yes. Can't you load me up with anything else? In this job, we don't load people up, Sergeant. And we don't tolerate corruption in any shape or form. Sergeant Doyle, I'm suspending you from duty. He doesn't look too happy, does he? Why would he? Be grateful it's not you. This has all been very unfortunate, Stuart. I hope you don't think that any of us had any doubts about you. No. But thanks for that, boss. I'm really sorry, Maggie. There's nothing I can do for him. We're just doing our job, eh, boss? He said he'd rather you left him alone. This is so ridiculous. No, look, I'm just telling you He's what he said. He's my father. He doesn't want to speak to me. You can't waste time fighting facts. Oh, God, there's just got to be another way of looking at no, all of this, you know? We just have to look at the evidence. No, I'm not, I'm not asking you to do anything different. There just must be another version of all the events that fits these I, I facts, know, you know? I know, I know, I know. Look, listen, listen to me. I know you want to find him innocent, and I do too. We all do. But the forensic evidence alone will convict him. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maggie, listen. He was at the pub, right? He was at the pub. He had motive. He had opportunity. Look, anyone could have gone into that room. It could have been another dealer. I mean, maybe he overdosed by mistake. Maggie, I don't know. Can you see what you're doing? Yeah, I can. can. I doing? know. I know what I'm doing. I'm asking you for your help because I can't talk to him. I want you to. All right. Maggie thinks you drive a Ford. I sold it. She's just trying to help you, mate. I tell her I don't need any help. Look, Pat, I, I, I honestly don't know whether you took the money or not. Well, tell her I did. Why? To use as bait. Bait? Hmm. Well, she thinks whoever ran Jacobs off the road stole the money and they stuck it in your room. For God's sake, don't let her say that. Look, there's two dead men on this case already, probably more. Pat, what the hell is going on? Look, the bloke that told me about Jacobs was found floating in Port Phillip Bay. He's given a hot shot to shut him up. Sort of hot shot. High-grade heroin. Big hit. 
Who are these blokes you're talking about? PJ, I can't tell you that. Look, all that matters is... You think up something to tell Maggie to make a drop off this case. Just leave this one alone, okay? No, no, that that is that's not right. Something is not no, no, right. You just have to stay away from no, me. No, I can't. I can't leave him this alone. I just. Dad, can't how well do you know him? I know he's your dad, but how well do you know him? How well does anyone know anyone? <laughs> What are you talking about? After Robbie's death, he told me he wanted revenge. You can't say that about my father. You don't know him. Now listen to me, oh, Maggie. God. He listened to me. He wanted to get revenge and he didn't want to happen to you what happened to the other guy. What other guy? What other guy? Jacobs isn't the only one to end up dead. You didn't tell me that. I didn't think you needed to know. Is there anything else that you didn't tell me? No. Is that the truth? Yep. You know, I really wonder how well I know you sometimes. Maggie. You had absolutely no right to come between me and my father. I'm going to prove that he is innocent. Maggie, please. I'm asking you, please, will you leave this alone? Are you going to help me or not? Simple. I can't. Fine. That's, fine. That's all I needed to know. Maggie, that is all please I to know. listen to no, me. You think you know what's best for me better than I do. I hate that. So what are we doing? I honestly do not know, but I know that I need time to think alone. Now, would you mind leaving? Fine. I'll see you.